What's up internet? This is Hourglass Gaming. Today I wanted to do a video talking about some of the gripes that people have with Titanfall and why I think a lot of that is unfounded. Titanfall has gotten a lot of criticism for being too simple of a game and for not offering its players the same variety of gameplay that something like Battlefield or Call of Duty does. And so I wanted to do a video talking about that argument of Titanfall's simplicity and why I think that the game is better for it. I'm going to rag on Battlefield a fair amount in this video, um, so I just want to say up front that I do still really enjoy Battlefield. I still play it a lot. I just think it's a useful comparison to talk about Titanfall with. I think there's a couple things that lead into this that we need to discuss in order to understand why Titanfall has so few options. The first of these is Respawn Entertainment, Titanfall's developer. This developer is a young studio, and while they have experience working on games like Call of Duty, the studio doesn't have the resources or time that other studios have. So while Infinity Ward and DICE have been working on their games for many years, this is Respawn's first title. And so with that, everything that Titanfall is has to be built from the ground up. This is further compounded by the fact that they don't use real-world items as the models for their game items. Um, and so if Battlefield wants to add a new weapon to the game, then they can search the real world for weapons that they haven't included in the game yet, and then they can add those in, and they don't have to design those weapons. They have exactly what it's gonna look like. Titanfall, on the other hand, has to work from scratch, which means that every time they consider adding a new piece to the game, that piece has to work its way from an artist's mind through concept, design, balance, testing, until it's finally part of the game. Um, this process takes a lot of time and effort and potentially the resources that Respawn simply doesn't have. This also extends into things like maps. Uh, part of what allows DICE and Infinity Ward to create content is their willingness to charge their player base for products that they've made in the past. Battlefield 4's Second Assault DLC consisted almost entirely of taking maps and items from Battlefield 3, putting a new layer of gloss on them, and then reselling them to the community. If Titanfall wants to make a map, then they need to build it from the ground up. The second thing that prevents Titanfall from bringing the same variety to the table with other games is the quality that Respawn puts into their games, which is almost without fail impeccable. With the notable exception of Swampland, which I don't like for personal reasons, I thoroughly enjoy all the maps that Titanfall has to offer, which I think is a real feat. Titanfall has a lot of things in the air when it comes to map design. They need to make sure that both pilots and Titans have cover to fall back to and spaces to fight in. They have to ensure that pilots can maneuver to gain advantage over Titans, um, and they even need to make sure that when a pilot wall runs and then jumps, that the windows of the building that they're jumping into are at the right height and distance away that the pilot can effectively move into and out of buildings. And so it's amazing that Titanfall's maps are so good when you consider everything that could go wrong with them. If you then compare that to something like Battlefield, where the third of the maps are garbage, then it's pretty amazing that Titanfall can deliver such polished content. And then when you add on to that that Titanfall delivered 15 maps at launch, while Battlefield delivered only 10, then that just is further evidence of the work that Respawn puts into their main game. Comparing Titanfall and Battlefield maps is kind of like comparing apples to oranges just because they're doing such radically different things with their games. But if you're complaining about Titanfall's lack of variety, um, then I think their map design begs to differ. The other area where I think Titanfall quality comes through is in the balance of the game. There are never times where I feel like I'm dying or that the game isn't fun because my opponent has an unfair advantage over me. Even when I'm killed with a smart pistol, uh, that weapon is balanced by the amount of time that it takes to lock on. And so if you go head to head and you're using a smart pistol and the other person is not, then the chances are that you're gonna lose. Respawn has stated on a few occasions that the reason their DLCs aren't shipping with new weapons and Titans is that they're worried about how that would unbalance the game. Apparently within Respawn for a long time it looked like there would only be one Titan chassis because they were struggling to get the Titans balanced. In a game like Battlefield though, the title was shipped without the balancing having been worked out. 
I used to love piloting attack helicopters in Battlefield 3, and I was pumped to use them in Battlefield 4, um, but the game had changed in such a way that made piloting attack helicopters effectively a waste of time. A lot of what makes Titanfall such a well-balanced game is their commitment not to add new items, even though doing so would drive the monetization opportunities for the game. Every Battlefield DLC adds new weapons and gadgets to the game, and most of these go almost entirely unused by the community. Battlefield has 81 primary weapons, which doesn't even cover gadgets, explosives, and secondary weapons. Yet most of the community sticks to a few weapons and gadgets that they know will increase the likelihood of their success. Battlefield's gun mechanics are more varied and complex than Titanfall's, but it would still be that way if they cut half the guns included in the game. They keep adding guns to the game so that they can tell their customers that they're adding to the experience. Ultimately, I think dissatisfaction with Titanfall stems from the idea that more will make it better. The perception that if we've gotten new titans, new weapons, and new equipment with the new maps that we got, then the game would be a more complete experience for it. And I simply don't think this is the case. I am only happy that there are three titan chassis in Titanfall because it gives me a variety of opponents, but I spend the overwhelming majority of my time in the Atlas. And if the game had only had the Atlas titans, then I would have been happy with it. As far as weapons go, Titanfall has one of everything. And while I would love to see some more variety in weapons, I think it does just fine without that variety. I use the R101C most of the time, and when I feel like switching things up, then I build a class around a different concept. Titanfall has enough tools to accomplish this without inundating me with useless items that negatively impact the balance and polish of the game. Games that have longevity don't stick around because they have lots of filler that help sell DLCs. They stick around because gameplay is tight, balanced, and fun. Counter-Strike and Insurgency are excellent examples of this. If you compare them to bigger titles, then they have very little variety, yet they remain relevant because they're excellently crafted games. Halo 2's multiplayer experience will return with the Master Chief Collection, and a lot of people are excited about it because it's a return to Halo multiplayer before the game became more complex and balanced deteriorated. I think Titanfall has the misfortune of landing at a time when the number of items counts more in sales than quality of gameplay does. It seems like the game was purchased more as a diversion than a primary attraction, which is unfortunate because the game has grown to be one of my favorite shooters. But what do you guys think? Um, am I a hopeless fanboy who fails to see the mess of the game that I'm playing? Do you think that items and weapon variety brings more to the table than Titanfall's bare bones approach? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.